you like kale, Frankie? Is it Russian, Frankie? Yes. Do your Russian accent. I go to the store to find rich husband. <laughs> <laughs> no, you did not. Welcome to the Crouch Ranch. I'm Frankie. And I'm Mike. And today we're going to show you some things that you can plant even before spring gets here. Let's do it. Couple of quick shout outs for you guys. Uh, Bootstrap Farmer is where I get my planting equipment from here. These pots are super sturdy and they are really nice and well made. Bootstrap Farmer is a family owned business. A couple of brothers started this. They're right here in the United States. Check out their website. There's a link below. They have all kinds of awesome stuff for planting seeds, for microgreens, for greenhouses, grow lights, you name it, they've got it. So, and then I also want to mention MI Gardener. If you're looking for a place to get seeds from, MI Gardener is a great place to look first. Again, family owned business in Michigan, hence the MI. And he has amazing seeds. So I always check there first and see what he has. And if he doesn't have what I want, then I go somewhere else. But there's a link for MI Gardener below as well. So right now, we're gonna plant, oh gee, some basil and some basil. Swiss chard. Let's do this. So we're in zone nine here, and our last frost is generally about the very end of March. It's gonna vary for you guys depending on where you're located, but what that means is, uh, as a general rule is, I wanna plant my seeds, I wanna start my seeds indoors about six weeks, five or six weeks before that last day of March so that they're established and I can set them out in the garden after the last frost. Now, there are some things that don't mind the frost and actually I'm holding basil, that's not one of them. Uh, the reason I'm doing basil now is because we're gonna grow it indoors, but some things that we grow don't mind a little bit of frost. So what we can do is we can get away with planting them even a month or so before that last frost and give them a head start so that we get kind of a, almost a, a, an extra crop out of the year. Broccoli is one of our favorites. We love broccoli. Broccoli does not do well in the summertime in the middle of the heat. So growing your broccoli early in the year and late in the year is a key if you wanna have good broccoli harvests. And we get two amazing broccoli harvests harvests, sure, every year. Because we plant early and we plant late. Swiss chard's another one that doesn't mind a little bit of cold. I have Swiss chard out there right now that's holdover from last year and it's braving the cold just fine. Uh, kale's another one that we still have out there from last year and it's braving the cold. Think about your leafy things like kale and chard and some of your lettuces and some of your cabbages, the things that can handle a little bit of frost. And plant those now, get them started in here so that you know five, six weeks from now you can put them out there before spring really hits and probably harvest those much earlier in the year. So Frankie, let's go ahead and plant some chard. What do you say? What you're gonna do is just dump some of these out on your plate here. Go ahead. Take the best looking ones, okay? The bigger ones? And the, 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 the best looking ones, and you're gonna put one in each of these holes that you made, okay? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Okay, now Frankie, what you're gonna wanna do is take some of this dirt like this, put it over the top of them, okay? And just, just lightly tamp it down, all right? Okay, and I already made you some little Swiss chard, so you're just gonna pop this right in the front, slide it down. Little there you go. So you can read it. Nice, nice. Look at that. Let's see. Now we pre-dampened this soil in the tray, so we are actually gonna have to water them in right now depending on what medium you use or how you do that, now would be a time to give them a little bit of water. But what we're gonna do is go ahead and plant, plant some broccoli. We're gonna do four, eight, 12 broccoli plants right now. You ready? Yes. All right. You're gonna get two seeds and put them in each hole, okay? Two. All the way down and make sure it gets in the hole. Why do you think we're doing two? So that um, you'll get the reason we're doing two, Frankie, is because sometimes they don't all germinate. Mm -hmm. And if we do two in each hole, the odds are at least one of them is going to germinate. You did not do that one. I did this one, so now you're starting right here. 
got it. The odds are at least one of them will germinate. And if both of them germinate, whichever one of the two is the healthiest once it's an inch or so tall, we'll pull the other one out. Tamp your seeds in, just like you did with the chard. You have to tuck in the broccoli seeds so they can grow. All right, Frankie, so now we need to do another tray. So I'm gonna take these, put them up here. Now folks, if you don't have one of these beautiful south-facing bay windows like I do, you can do this with some very inexpensive grow lights that you can also get from Bootstrap Farmer. It just so happens that we have these two amazing bay windows that face south, so we utilize them for growing our microgreens in the wintertime and starting all of our seeds in the spring. It's time, Frankie, to do some Russian red kale. And what do you have to do first? You have to make holes. Yes. Plant your, uh, plant your red Russian kale seeds. You're putting two in each hole, right? Mm-hmm. Beautiful. I'll make you some little labels here. Oh, thank you. You will. Do you like kale, Frankie? Is it Russian, Frankie? Yes. Do your Russian accent. I go to the store to find rich husband. <laughs> <laughs> no, you did not. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you even learn that? <laughs> Frankie! Oh! Pretty accurate though. I go to the store to find the rich husband. Did you teach her that? No, she said it to me earlier today and I was dying. Okay, well, while we're being politically incorrect, I will say that uh, Rush Russian, Russian, Russian kale, Russian red kale is one of the ones that actually is the most tolerant I, I've experienced. I haven't Googled this, uh, but the most tolerant of cold, so. Because the I last like, thing you want is intolerant kale. Especially intolerant Russian kale. Right? So, what do you got to do now? Now you have to tuck them in. Got to tuck them in. So they can grow. Das vidanya. Thanks for watching guys, make sure to like the video, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications. Boom! Like a rock star! Like a pro! Careful tilting that, there's water underneath. There you go. Yeah, we don't want to have a wet floor. We don't like the wet floor. <laughs> Where are you going to go again? Where are you going? To the store to get to my husband. <laughs> <laughs>